Hello from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. It's been a crazy journey over the last few weeks in France, including getting bitten by a dog. I know some of you are probably wondering the situation with the dog bite. I mentioned about that in the last video and explain what happened. Basically in France, I was bitten by a dog. This is now four or five days after the initial dog bite. There's no pain anymore, but the bruising is yeah, quite prominent. Now it's finally time for me to return home to Scotland. For my journey back, I'm going to be taking a different route. I'm going to be taking a ferry from Amsterdam in the Netherlands to Newcastle in the north of England. There's a few reasons why I want to take this route back. And basically the main one is that I can't be bothered driving the entire length of England again. It was a really tiring and exhausting journey, especially in this old camper van. The second reason is that I'm from Scotland. So Newcastle's not that far from the border and it's not that much much of a drive for me to get home. The third reason is that I'm trying to avoid adding unnecessary mileage to the van because I have a limit that the insurance covers every year. I can increase it, but I have to pay quite a lot to do that. So I'm trying to stay under a limit, under the threshold and not drive unnecessary miles. So the ferry that I'll be taking today between Amsterdam and Newcastle is operated by a company called DF. DS and this will be my first ever time taking a ferry with them. The ferry was due to depart today at 5.30 p.m. However, I received a text message and an email yesterday letting me know that the ferry will now be departing at 4 p.m. instead and the check-in will close at 3.30 p.m. I'm currently around 20 minutes from the ferry terminal. The weather today is extremely windy. This morning I drove all the way from Ypres in Belgium here to Amsterdam and as I was driving the van was shaking and rocking side to side on the highway from the wind. It was really really crazy. So I'm a little bit nervous about the ferry journey to be honest. I just checked on my phone and later today the wind speeds are forecast to be 50 miles per hour which sounds quite windy. To be honest this was a really last minute booking. If you watched one of my previous videos you'll know that I decided to change my plans and return to Scotland after getting bitten by a dog. So I haven't had any time to do any research about this ferry. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what it's like. Now I'm going to pack a few things and get organized for the ferry journey. So as I was driving from Ypres in Belgium here to Amsterdam this morning, I never realized how small the countries of Belgium and the Netherlands are. I've only ever flown into Amsterdam or into Brussels. I've never really driven in the countries. So it was so interesting to drive across these countries in just a few hours. If you drive the whole length of the UK or even France, it's hours and hours. And it's crazy to me that you can drive across Belgium in just, I think it was three hours it took to drive across Belgium. So to pack my pajamas. I really hope this is not going to be a choppy crossing and I can get some sleep while I'm on the ferry. That's me all packed and ready to go and I still have some time to kill before the ferry check-in opens. So I'll play June's Journey, which is a game that I play on my phone and I've been enjoying it a lot recently. And thank you to June's Journey for sponsoring this video today. If you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know how interested I am in history. Well, June's Journey is a hidden mystery object game set in the glamour of the 1920s. It's completely free to play and each scene takes takes you through a murder mystery story where June is trying to solve the murder of her sister and she uncovers many family secrets. The scenes in the game are so beautiful and colourful and I love seeing all the vintage items from that era. I've really been enjoying playing June's journey in my van in the evenings and I feel like I'm transported to a different world every time I play the game. If you're looking for a new game to try, you can download June's journey via the link below or scan the QR code on the screen. Now let's get going and head to the ferry check-in. Let's go back to Scotland! I booked my ferry a few days ago and paid 350 euro 
for a cabin and my camper van. It seems if you book further in advance, it's possible to get a discount. We're almost at the ferry, around seven more minutes. It's so windy, the van is shaking from side to side. I feel really nervous because this is like the last 10 minutes before I get to the ferry and after everything that's gone wrong on this trip, especially when I was in France, I am just so anxious that something else is going to happen before I leave. I'm focusing so much on driving carefully, staying on the right side of the road. I don't see any more signs for Newcastle. There were signs for Newcastle previously, but I can't see any signs now. But it looks like there's a ferry straight ahead. Okay, I can see a sign for DFDS. That is the ferry company who operates the ferry between Amsterdam and Newcastle. Oh, there's a huge ferry there, yes. Wow, it's absolutely massive. Okay, where's the check-in? Um, it's not very really clear where you need to go. Is it in here? Quite annoying having the window on our side. Yes, hello. No. My passport. Okay. There you go. Thanks. Yes. Oh, it's going to blow away. Oh, it's so windy. Okay, so at the first window here, we're checking the passport. It mentions on the window here that you can book your meal here at the check in desk and you can get a discount. Okay. Yes, Lovely. Is your cabin key? Okay. Uh, passport, you need to show it the next window for passport control. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye. Bye. Let's move to the next window. So she said this is going to be passport control here at the next window. Hello. Hi. There you Thank go. You. How did you stay? Oh, I was only here for one day. I need to come back again. Oh, really? Yeah, I was in France. France? Oh, yes. how did you stay there? Uh, yeah, actually not so good. I got bitten by a dog. Really? Yeah, so I will go home early. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No? Yeah. Okay? Or... Uh, it's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck with it. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye. Let's go on to the ferry now. <laughs> okay. Hi. Is there anything to declare? No. No weapons? No. No drugs? No. Uh, alcohol? Alcohol? No. Uh, cash money. Uh, alcohol, just like I've got one bottle of wine. One bottle of wine? Yes. I would say don't drink it all at once. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, no cigarettes? No, I don't smoke. No. Alright, you can go directly on board. Okay. Have a good day. Great, thanks. The ferry leaves from a place near Amsterdam and I'll write the name of this place on the screen as I've no idea how to pronounce it. Here is the van, they're closing this thing here. Okay, hi. Bye. bye, bye everyone, bye. Oh, they're so friendly. Okay, so we're going to number eight on my card, deck number eight. Have my bag. Straight into the right side. Okay. And you will see your cabin on the right side. Sorry. Okay, lovely. Walking down the corridors here, and then I am 8120. So looks like my cabin is just here. Here we go, 8120. So I have made it into my cabin and it seems like it's a private cabin. There's only one bed set up inside and hopefully no one else will be arriving. So let me show you around. It's quite a small cabin, but it is quite cozy and this will be my room for the next 16 or so hours. So this is inside the room here, the cabin. Then we have this dressing table and there is a light and a socket and a mirror. Then on the left we have the bed, so because I'm staying on my own, only one bed was set up. And then above is another bed, which would be a bunk. 
The ladder for the bunk bed is just there beside the back of the door. Between the beds, there is that small bedside table and then there is a sofa on the right hand side which can seat two people potentially. One towel was provided, there's no shampoo, conditioner, shower gel, toothpaste, there's no hair dryer in the room. There's two hangers here and one pillow was provided. Inside here we have uh, the bathroom, so there's the light for the bathroom. So there is a shower which is located above the toilet, so like a wet room. There's some soap for washing your hands. Then we have the sink here, and then down here is some toilet paper. Quite a spacious bathroom actually, but the shower is above the toilet there. Beside the mirror, there's these controls here. They look like they might be for a radio or something, but I've tried them and they don't seem to work. This is the key card for the room. So this barcode will go into the door and then it will open. The ferry is about to depart. I'm going to head out to the deck and watch us leave Amsterdam. Let's go. Just near the cabins is the door. So I came outside, it's seriously windy and I've just remembered that I forgot to take the seasick tablet. So when I get back to the cabin, I will do that. So this is where we'll be going, down here and to Newcastle. There are so many different areas outside. I'm going to head up here and try and get a really good view as we depart huge outdoor area. It's absolutely massive. Look, you could do some exercise out here. This looks like the captain's area up here. Oh, so windy. So to get up there, to get a view from the front, it looks like it's not possible. I'm going to go around the other side and see if we can get up there. I really want to get up to the top area here. Just came through those doors and round to the other side. Here's the area where I arrived and checked in. The passport control. And then I drove around this area here. And then around those trucks and then I entered the ship on this side. There's the captain up there getting ready to leave. We should be leaving any moment now, four o'clock departure time. I wonder, because they changed the departure time of the ferry, I wonder if anyone has missed it and is just turning up now. Could be quite possible, actually. I think all these windows here on the right side are cabins, and these are the cabins that have windows facing to the outside world. The ferry actually seems quite quiet. There's not many people on it at all and hardly anyone standing outside, no one in the restaurant at the moment. The time is 3.59 and the engines have just started and they blew the horn. And I noticed some people upstairs here. So I'm going to head up and try and get to the top deck for the departure. It even says here there's a sky bar, an outside deck bar. Wow, I doubt it's open this time of year. Hope Ernie is safe in the under compartments of the ferry. It's not rolling around. Here's the outdoor area. Absolutely huge outdoor area. Oh, it seems like we're moving. Wow, we're moving, we're leaving. Bye bye Amsterdam. Just leaving the harbour now and it already feels quite choppy. So windy, man. Oh. Really hope this is not going to be a horrific crossing. I need to take those seasickness tablets ASAP. Here's the DFDS Sky Bar. Here are the prices of the drinks here at the Sky Bar. Heineken, five euro fifty. Foster's, oh they have Guinness, five euros. Heading out into the sea.
It's really hard to convey how windy it is out there. Like I can hardly even stand up outside. I'm already feeling a bit seasick. So I don't have any water on me right now, but I'm going to take this seasickness tablet and just swallow it dry. Okay, it's down, it's down. Okay, hopefully that'll help. So over in the distance is where we came out here. The ferry was here, it's come around and then coming out here now. On this side there is a beach with lots of people kite surfing. That looks so much fun. Behind me is the edge of the harbour, so that's us leaving Amsterdam and next stop is Newcastle. Stormisha has caused so much chaos on the UK because what's rare with Stormisha is we've seen those amber and yellow warnings cover the whole of the country. Usually it's a bit more localised. In terms of the wind speeds, well, the record this morning was at Tay Bridge near Dundee, saw 107 miles an hour gusts there. We've seen 99 miles an hour gusts. I feel absolutely awful. The ferry lift, the harbour in Amsterdam, and then I was chatting to a Dutch guy on the deck, and then I was in the shop and we were trying the whiskies. So in the shop, you can try whiskies, and then the boat has started shaking and when you're walking around like you're just constantly being pushed around and I feel so ill. I definitely need to lie down and have a rest. Oh my goodness. Oh god. Oh god. That is I think the first time I've actually been seasick. I've always felt seasick but I haven't actually been sick before. Oh my gosh. I can't believe that happened. That was awful. I've not eaten much today at all. I just had a bit of toast with avocado this morning and going to the shop to try the whiskey samples. I think I had four and mixed with this rocking boat. Oh my gosh. Sorry, the Laphroaig and Talisker whiskey has ended up at the bottom of the toilet. I've got the sick bag here. I'm going to put this beside the bed and I'm going to lie down and try and make myself feel better. And then hopefully I can walk around the ship after and show you what it looks like. Things are really bad on the boat. Sorry, everyone, I can't get out of the bed. It's so bad in here. All my things fell off the table and I don't know if you can see over there, it's all water on the floor. My water bottle fell down and went everywhere. Oh, I feel so sick. I feel so sick, I can't even get up to get the camera. I'm just filming this on my phone. Oh, help, help. Okay, I'm going to try and go back to sleep because I can't handle this. My only dream is to get off this boat. I realise there's still 12 more hours. It's only 8 o'clock, we're only 4 hours in. Oh, how can this be? I should have taken the channel tunnel. The current time is around midnight and the crazy shaking has stopped. It's still shaking but I'm no longer feeling seasick. It feels just like a normal ferry journey now. I'm going to wake up around 6 and then take a walk around the ship. Good night everyone. Good night. Hello, last time I checked in it was around midnight, now it's around 6.30 
and I slept for almost 11 hours. Last night was one of the worst nights of my entire life. The boat was rocking. It was like being in a washing machine. I just had to let my body like go with the flows and try to imagine that I was in a hammock or something. Oh, it was so awful. I was so sick. All the people around in the other rooms were being sick as well. I could just hear people vomiting and oh, it was, to be honest, very bad. It's not because of the ferry itself, it's because of the weather. So yesterday there were 50 mile an hour winds forecast and that's why the ferry left at 4 p.m. instead of 5.30, the usual departure time. Next time I'll take the Channel Tunnel. I know I said that I didn't want to drive up the length of England, but that seems like a breeze compared to what I experienced last night. Oh my gosh. The boat is still rocking a little bit, but it's just like a normal ferry crossing. It's nothing like last night. Between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. last night was the toughest time. The ferry is due to arrive into Newcastle around 9.30, but because we left early, I wonder if we're going to arrive early as well. It would be good if we do because I want off this ferry ASAP. <laughs> now I'm going to go outside. Oh, it started shaking again. Go outside and have a tour of the ferry and see if there's any breakfast available as well. I'm also quite keen to go outside and see if it's light yet. Let's go. Oh, there's different types of rooms. The room I'm in doesn't have a window, but some of them do, and I believe these Commodore classrooms, they all have a window. In here is a cinema, Cinema 1 and Cinema 2. It mentions the different films that are on, so we have Wish, Aquaman, and The Lost Kingdom, The Creator, and then over here, Trolls Band Together, Wonka, that would have been good. 8.30, that was peak seasick time. A Haunting in Venice. Wow, two cinemas. So straight ahead, I believe this is a nightclub. So yesterday I actually walked through here as I came in from the outside deck. Oh, there's a driver's lounge. In here is an amusement. Oh, I love this game. This is really good. A few different things, racing game. And then through here, we have the nightclub. So as I walked through here yesterday, there were lots of people sitting in here. It's really dark now, but there's the bar. I'm sorry, I didn't get any footage of the nightclub in action yesterday. I was planning to come back and film the nightclub, film dinner. I was going to walk around and maybe even go to the cinema, but unfortunately, because I was so seasick, it just wasn't possible at all. These are the toilets, the public toilets. Now I've come down to deck number seven. I wonder what's on this cabin. Looks like there's a bistro, a North Sea bistro. And then we have more cabins over here. Something about the time, so on board, it's always Dutch and German time and then the UK time is one hour behind. Hello. So the North Sea Bistro is for the Commodore cabins and then regular cabins is round this side. I feel a bit seasick looking at this boat, to be honest. Oh, they have bubble tea, Starbucks coffee. Oh, and here is a kids area, Pirate Island. That looks fun. So I've just walked past the North Sea Bistro and then this here looks like a private bar. Lots of Scottish whiskies here. So this is the Compass Bar, open from 5 p.m. So this would have been open last night, but unfortunately I never made it here. <laughs> so it mentions here, breakfast is served on deck six, one deck below at the Explorer's Kitchen. So I wonder what this restaurant is. Let's go in and have a look. I am so hungry after last night, so I went for the breakfast buffet and there's many things available. So this is my first plate, a few pieces of bread, croissant, orange juice. They offer you also tea or coffee and left the coffee pot on the table. 
and then I'll go back for some more after this, maybe some fruits. So I went and got some fruit and I asked for some ice as well because the orange juice isn't cold. So I'll put some ice in there. The breakfast buffet on the ferry costs 16 euro 50 and there are many items to choose from like breads, hot items, cheeses, yogurt and juices. I've now made it down to the sixth floor and I've come across an ATM down here and there's also a shop on this floor. The shop is where I did the whiskey tasting last night before I became violently ill and in the shop they sell lots of different things. They sell clothes, underwear, perfumes, food, it's huge. So I finished my breakfast and now I've come outside. It's just before sunrise and it's becoming quite light. In the distance I can see some lights so I think we're going up alongside the English eastern coast. To be honest, I don't know if having breakfast at the restaurant was a good idea. I was so hungry because I only ate one meal yesterday and then obviously it was no longer in my stomach. But yeah, maybe I should have waited. People keep saying, if you look at the horizon, it makes you feel less seasick. So I'm trying to do that. And then the cold air on my face is really helping. As I've been walking around the ship, I've heard people speaking to each other, just standing around and they were all speaking about being seasick. Everyone said, everyone, so many people I heard were like, yeah, I was in my room like feeling awful, I was sick. I've heard a few conversations like that at breakfast in the breakfast room and then also just as I've been walking around the ship. I've done a lot of sailing when I was younger, more on smaller dinghies, but I don't usually get seasick. I do tend to get more seasick like feeling when I'm on ferries. I once took a 26 hour ferry in Japan and it was between Kagoshima and Okinawa, if anyone knows where that is. And I felt very seasick on that, but I wasn't actually sick. But this has been the first ferry that I've actually been sick after feeling seasick. I just came back up to the very top deck of the ship just to see if there's a better view, but I could hardly even make it up here because it is so windy. I almost lost my hat and even getting up the stairwell up to this top deck was a struggle. The wind is intense. I'm going to head back to my room now and lie on the bed. I was speaking to another staff member on the ferry and he said he's worked on the sea for 27 years and last night he was not feeling good. He said he felt very seasick, but he wasn't actually seasick, but he was on shift at the most rocky time and he said it was pretty tough. <laughs> now that we're quite close to the coast of England, I'm able to get 4G again on my phone and I've had some messages come through. So one of my friends who lives in Newcastle mentioned that there was a storm, Storm Isha. So, wow, we were sailing through a storm. I knew that there were going to be 50 mile per hour winds, but oh my goodness, I can't believe there was a storm. And it says, unfortunately expect some delays on the arrival and departure times for the Amsterdam Newcastle service. Oh my goodness. Arrival time in Newcastle, 1 p.m but I think it's going to be 9.45. I asked the person downstairs, so we still have an hour and 30 minutes left until we arrive into Newcastle. Wow, I'm going to lie down on the bed and just try and breathe and not feel seasick. And then if I feel seasick, I'll go outside again. When I was outside, I actually felt okay because of the cold air on my face. It really helped and also looking at the horizon that really helps thank you everyone who's given that advice before i was asleep for around one hour and there was just an announcement from the captain he said that last night there were gale force winds that started one hour after departure from amsterdam and they measured 25 meters per second 
in terms of the wind. I don't know how that compares to a normal wind or storm. I don't know about that measurement. I usually just know miles per hour. So that was why last night was so, so stormy. And he said on the announcement, I hope you had a pleasant crossing and it doesn't put you off coming, <laughs> coming with us again. <laughs> I'm going to head out now and see what Newcastle looks like. I've actually seen this ferry approach uh, Newcastle many times because my friend who lives in Newcastle lives on the coast and in the living room you can see the ferry coming in through the mouth of Tyne in an area called Tynemouth. Tynemouth is a beautiful part of Newcastle. It's lovely, there's lots of amazing cafes and restaurants and shops there. So if you're in the Newcastle area, Tynemouth is definitely a place to check out and after I arrive I'm probably going to go to my friend's house and have a coffee and tell them about my, my lovely ferry journey. So I'm going to head up now onto the deck. Before I head outside I would just like to say I don't mean to come across as being negative or complaining. If you've seen my videos before you know I'm not usually like that. I try and see the good in everything and I've had quite a few bad experiences on this trip to Europe and then we've ended with this horrific ferry journey. If you're going to Scotland or if you have any interest in Scotland I've made lots of travel videos about Scotland so please feel free to check out some of those other videos on my channel. Let's head up now to the deck and see Tynemouth and Newcastle as we arrive into North East England. It looks like I was a bit late actually. We've already <laughs> pretty much come into Newcastle. I'm going to head up onto the top deck, see if we can see any better views. Finally, finally we're back. Oh, I'm so happy to be back. <laughs> come back, pick up my bag. Now it's time to go back to the van and drive off the ship. Cars are starting to move off the ferry. The lorry in front of me is tied down with ropes. So I imagine all of these will have to get off first. I still feel seasick. Still feel seasick. Oh my gosh, the moment. Oh. Now there's two lanes, I wonder why. I thought one might be British number plates and one might be non-British number plates, but there doesn't seem to be any separation like that. So, they're pulling some vehicles aside, I think, for further investigation. There's been about four vehicles pulled in. I hope they don't pull me in. Now, there's nothing much to find in my van apart from one bottle of wine and some clothes. <laughs> Not much. Now I've been waiting for around 15 to 20 minutes between getting off the ferry and waiting in the line to go through the border control. Now, I am at pretty much the back of the line, but something to be aware about if you're in a rush when you get off the ferry. Okay, I'm going to be next. There's just one more car in front of me now. Oh, it... Okay, I'm next. Let's get the window down. Hello, good morning. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, very painless. Just scan the passport. Now we're heading through this area. And we're out. Almost back in Scotland. Get me home. <laughs> Woohoo! I need to drive on the left. I'm so, I'm so confused because I've been trying so hard to drive on the right. So I really, really need to drive on the left. 
I think this is just two lanes on the left here anyway, but oh, right. 11 minutes to my friend's house. Let's go there and I'm going to just lie down and have a rest and then I'm going to tackle the drive home. My goodness. In 800 feet, at the roundabout, take the second exit 